So now let's take the rules that were explained to us in the previous video and start drawing out Lewis structures and we're going to see that we're going to need a little bit more of a deeper theory in order to show these shapes of molecules. So let's look at BeCl2. Okay. First we need to identify the central atom and the central atom is going to be beryllium because beryllium only shows up once. So our beryllium is going to have two valence electrons. Our ligands in this case are chlorine and as we showed in the previous video if we have a chlorine or any halogen ligand it's going to contribute one electron to the central atom to form a bond. This gives us four electrons on the central atom. If there's four electrons, this gives us two pairs. Now we have to determine if we have a bonding pair or a lone pair and how many there are. If we take a beryllium, we need to have two bonds to chlorines. So there's going to be two bonding pairs and zero lone pairs of electrons around that beryllium. So when we draw this, our BE is going to form a bond to each of the chlorine and the chlorine is going to have its octet of electrons around it. So this is how we would draw the structure for BeCl2 and this is going to be linear as it forms two bonds that are 180 degrees apart from each other. And for linear molecules, Lewis structures serve a fairly decent purpose for us. But the question is, what happens when we go to another example like ammonia? For ammonia, our central atom is going to be nitrogen because it only shows up once in our formula. For nitrogen, we have five valence electrons. Hydrogen is going to contribute one electron to the central atom and we have three of them. This gives us a total of eight electrons. If we have eight electrons, there are four pairs of electrons. That nitrogen can form three bonds to each of the hydrogens, or one bond to each hydrogen, there's three of them. So that gives us three bonding pairs, and we have one lone pair. So when we draw the ammonia molecule, we have a nitrogen with bonds to three different hydrogens, then we have our lone pair of electrons on the nitrogen. So the question that we need to ask ourselves now is what shape does the ammonia molecule have? Because the way we draw it on paper right here, it looks like it'll fit in a plane. And really this isn't the shape that the ammonia molecule takes on. So we need some other theory to distinguish one shape for another and this is going to be discussed in the next video where we look at molecular shapes and the VS EPR theory.